Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. So tonight I have all my audio working, all my everything working. Uh, way better situation than I was in the last time. So I've got a great show for you tonight. We have a lot to get to, so I'm going to just kind of jump into a couple of quick topics, give people a chance to filter in, and then we're going to go right into the bourbons. <clears throat> so what I've decided to do tonight was a couple of things. I wanted to really put some whiskeys to the test that are, <laughs> thank you, Steve. I wanted to put some whiskeys to the test that are under $25 and more specifically under $20. So I did my absolute best to buy as many whiskeys as I could from my local total wine that were under $20. Now, the funny thing is there were actually very, very few. And although we're in the US, or at least I am, you know, it was still very hard to find any sort of whiskeys that were that inexpensive. And most of them tended to settle in right about $30. So what I ended up finding, <laughs> damn it, I see 86, I saw the word audio and I just immediately was just like, oh no, what's going on? Anyway, all right. So what I, what I found was interesting was that Total Wine has this whole thing called Spirits Direct, which I think some of you probably are familiar with. Essentially, it's a bunch of brands that Total Wine helps them to establish themselves um, in a lot of cases, they're maybe the only people who distribute them. Maybe Total Wine puts their own name on something, just renames something. You know, it's kind of like they do their own brands. It's a whole bunch of stuff that Total Wine does. And because of that, I, I also said to myself, okay, I don't want to pick any of those because there were probably another eight to 10 of them that were only Spirits Direct. But I can't count on all of you being able to get your hands on them. So I wanted to pick things that you could reasonably go out and buy because at the end of tonight, I think that you're probably going to realize that there are a number of really good whiskeys out there that are very inexpensive. Um, you know, if maybe you didn't figure this out in college like some of us did. So, first things first. Um, I, this is kind of more like, a, I guess, a little bit of news, whatever update. So, I'm going to be going to the Bastards Ball this year. It's going to be in the middle of October or so. I got the invite just the other day from Daniel. So for anybody who is going to be going to the Bastards Ball, I look forward to seeing you there. Make sure that you stop by my table and say hi. Uh, introduce yourself, only because it's a very good chance I, you know, don't recognize you just based off your internet name. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, last little thing. Well, actually, you know what? Nah, we got a few people in the, in the chat at this point. I'm going to go and I'm going to just jump right into this. So what we've got here, and I, I've got a second little camera set up to help out. So... We're going to start off with the Fighting Cock, because <laughs> that's what you start with. So we got the Fighting Cock, we got Old Granddad. Those are going to be our first contenders. Then we're going to move along to regular Evan Williams versus Wild Turkey. Then we're going to go to Jesse James, American Outlaw bur Bourbon. <laughs> then we're going to go to Jim Beam Bourbon, uh, 17, Evan Williams, 1783, and then Four Roses. So, oh, hey, One Man's Odyssey, congrats, man. That's awesome. Ah, that's fantastic. Tell me what you're going to... Well, tonight's not a, necessarily about drinking fine whiskeys, but I will absolutely uh, give you a cheers. So thank you. That's really awesome, man. That's... I, I don't know. My kids just turned... Well, my youngest just graduated or yeah, graduated preschool, so she's five, and my oldest is seven. So it's a little ways away from me, but it's definitely still fresh. All right, so let's go ahead and start off. We're going to do our first contenders. So let's start off with the Fighting Cock over here and the Old Grandad over here. So I'll pour a little bit and tell you a little bit about these whiskeys while I let them breathe for a moment because, you know, fine whiskeys like this need to experience. Oh, that's funny. It's got, it's, it's got a screw top and like a little piece of plastic. Um, so the plastic was just turning, but not the screw top. Anyway, let's get rid of that. All right. So let's do this. So we're going to start off with Fighting Cock. Um, oh boy, did I just screw up my video? It certainly looked like I did. Uh, all right, that was weird. Yeah, whatever I did, I, I fixed it. Um, that's strange. All right, whatever. OBS really is just not knocking it out of the park for me lately. All right, so Fighting Cock. This is Fighting Cock Kentucky Straight Bourbon. It's $18.49 is what it cost me. On... Um, what is it called? Uh, drip Distiller. On Distiller, it's got a 3.18 rating out of 86 ratings. So that was its average. Now we're going to put that up against Old Grandad. 
Now, Old Grandad is well known. It's about a dollar cheaper, sixteen seventy nine, maybe two dollars cheaper. And <laughs> all right, so yeah, just so you guys know, anytime that you talk about fighting cock, it's probably gonna immediately um, hide your comment. All right, so Old Grandad Kentucky Straight Bourbon, sixteen seventy nine, score of two point eight one out of four hundred twenty two. Now, I have noticed that the more votes that something gets, the closer it ends up being pretty much right towards like 2.7, 2.8. And this is across every whiskey on, on um, distiller. So I might stop using it for my, my uh, metrics here, but for the moment, we're going to stick with it. It's just interesting to see how no matter what the whiskey is, it always levels off at like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the fighting C word is tickling our sensor. <laughs> Love it. All right, so I'm going to start with the old granddad because I'm going to admit something to you guys. I've never had it. Believe it or not, I've never tried old granddad. Um, YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth stream. All right, whatever. If I have issues with my streaming, just let me know. I'm going to pretend it's not there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give this a nose. Okay, it smells like a young bourbon, but it does not smell offensive in any way. There's zero uh, burn here. This is this is a hundred proof. So that's oh no, it's not. It's forty percent. I uh, I had my notes wrong. So it's it's eighty proof. It's like cinnamon, um, kind of a little bit of vanilla oak. Like it's. I suspect we're going to hear a lot of the same tasting notes tonight. Um, yeah, you know, and I I'm actually eager to try the old granddad bottled and bond. Um, the main issue is I've just never tried this one, so I wanted to start at the bottom, and then I will work my way up. Plus, uh, I don't think the bottled and bond would fit into this category. All right, let's go ahead and... Actually, before I take a sip, only because it'll immediately burn my palate out, uh, starting with, with the, like, the fighting cock or whatever. So I'm going to smell this guy. I'm going to get my notes here. So this is 103 proof. No age statement, mash bill of 75% corn, 13 rye, 12 malted barley. Yeah, I mean, you feel it a little bit more on the nose, but still not, not crazy. All right, um, if I had to pick out any sort of note whatsoever, I would maybe say, I would maybe say banana, uh, which is good. Um, not really a whole lot of cinnamon to me. A um, little bit of toasted oak going on. I, I don't know about you guys. I tend to equate toasted oak and banana together a lot on my noses, uh, my nosing notes. Like, I find that those two are similar enough that I have to think about which one I'm smelling. All right, let's go ahead and have the OGD. Uh, and we are 808, so we're doing good. All right, cheers. Oh, uh, sorry. This one is to um, One Man's Odyssey for his new child. So congrats. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So that one took a little bit more of a trip than I than I thought it would. So it started off very not bland. Bland's kind of the, the wrong word, but what you would expect a you know sixteen dollar bourbon to taste like. It was just kind of very mellow. Let's use the word mellow. Then actually I'm gonna do that again. Hmm. Yeah. Then it, it goes cinnamon, like hard cinnamon. And then you taste the alcohol burn, which at 80%, or sorry, 80% 80 would be wonderful. At 80 proof, it's um, just kind of not, it's not well-rounded. It's not, you know, smooth. Keep in mind, I am going to just kind of put everything out there. I am well aware this is a $16 bourbon, right? I don't need to, to mince words. If it's not smooth, it's not smooth. But I'm also setting my expectations. I'm not going to say, oh, this is terrible because it's not smooth. It's $16, right? So, all right, anyway, taste on this. Again, cinnamon, uh, kind of like a fireball. Like, you know, those, uh, not fireball whiskey, although it's similar. Um, like fireball candies, you know, because it's got a sweetness to it as well. All right, let's go ahead and have a sip. All right, let's go with some fighting cack like a rooster. I should probably say fighting rooster. Some of you might have your families around. <laughs> Let's say fighting rooster. All right, cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So immediately, this one's pretty interesting. Now, this is a higher proof. This is 103 proof. It is also no age statement. Um, it tastes pretty good, actually. <laughs> 
almost like, and, and you can see about half of this bottle is gone. Now I will say I, I'm coming into this one with an opinion. Uh, the reason that so much of that bottle is gone is because I actually shared this around with some friends of mine because I couldn't believe that it actually tasted as good as it did for the price that it was and knowing the ABV. So what I found with with the fighting fighting rooster is that the ABV it, it you you're aware it's there, but it's not overwhelming. Um, especially for something over 100 proof, you would expect it to be a little bit more more at such a low price like harsh, right? Uh, it's just not. It's actually very well mellowed. Um, you taste it, but it's not doesn't doesn't really like burn, right? Um, the taste profile here is not very complex. Uh, some of that banana does come through. You get, um, yeah, cinnamon for sure. Not a whole lot more. So here's the thing. I have to pick one of these now and it's harder than I realize. And it's kind of not fair because this one's got an extra 20 proof, 23 proof on it. But I do think I am going to pick the fighting cock. And the reason for that there's two reasons. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, so 1849 versus 1679. It's like a dollar and a half more, so negligible price, right? Here's why I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna go with Fighting Cock. <laughs> the name is hilarious, so if you happen to be watching this and you're more like a, you know, young 20s kind of person or maybe in, in college or so, this would be a fun one to bring to a party. And just be like, ah, you know, there's the jokes write themselves, right? And I think that's great. Now, Old Granddad is tried and true and certainly going to be a favorite among, you know, some, some people who might have been drinking bourbon for a little longer. But ultimately where this falls flat for me is the way that it handles the ABV. At 80%, I would expect it to be smoother than it is. And it's not. Um, this handles the ABV better than this does at an extra 23 so, we're going to move along. We're going to pick the Fighting Cock as our winner tonight uh, for this particular round. So, I'm going to put that guy on the floor. I'm going to switch over to camera two. And I am going to pick the uh, Fighting Cock. Grab a little piece of tape here. Yeah, that's right. I'm working multiple camera angles. We're fancying it up. We are... All right, cool. So, we've got our winner. Boom. Fighting Cock. Boom. Cool. All right, let's move on to our next. And do not let me forget to mix everything together at the end because that is going to be very important. Absolutely necessary. All right, next we have Wild Turkey Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Just the old Kentucky, uh, sorry, the old Wild Turkey 81. And then we have Evan Williams Black Label. You go to the winner's circle. Okay. <clears throat> let's get a couple more glasses. So funny, whenever I do one of these, like I have 16 glasses for tonight's, uh, tonight's um, episode. This should be fun. All right, forgive me if I'm ignoring the chat a little bit. I've just got a lot to go through. So I'm gonna go with the Wild Turkey here. I'm gonna pour this and then we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Wild Turkey 81. Now everything Wild Turkey really can, can hold its own. Um, most people don't have a problem with Wild Turkey. And if they do, I'd be curious to know what that problem is. But I will tell you that the 81, although very useful and extremely good in cocktails, is very close in price, or close enough in price to the 101, which is just a freaking rock star, that it often becomes a little tough. Oh, uh, Mamuka, thank you. One man's odyssey, uh, one men's odyssey. Congratulations, man. Wish your newborn health, wellness, happiness. All yes, if anybody would like to congratulate uh, one man's odyssey with a super chat to me, then I... Think that's very appropriate <laughs> no um but no i think again that's awesome man what uh if you don't mind i'd love to know what what you named your your son i just think uh i think that kind of stuff is cool um all right so we're gonna start off with wild turkey we've got a score of 2.96 out of 955 so again kind of going with what i was talking about everything ends up at like a 2.8 <laughs> so uh 1699 then we have the evan williams ah did it again that's so weird. Okay, that's so bizarre. It's like, when I click on this thing, oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. 
We got Evan Williams. Uh, this is eleven dollars and forty nine cents. Austin Paul Hart, fantastic. Austin's a great name. All right, he's gonna be popping some collars with a name like Austin, right? So, <laughs> um, join me with some budget stuff. Yeah. So while I'm talking, why don't you guys tell me? Do you have a bourbon? Yeah, let's stick with bourbon, specifically bourbon. Not let's not go rye, let's not go scotch. Although you wouldn't be able to find a scotch at that price. Under twenty five dollars. What is your favorite bourbon? All right. So Evan Williams is at two point eight six out of sixteen hundred and forty five. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna give the wild turkey a nose first. Hey, Austin T. <laughs> There is a little weird funkiness to the nose of the Wild Turkey 81, actually. I don't recall this. Now, I, I remember during my review of the Wild Turkey 81, I believe I ended on, it was fine, but you're better off buying the 101. So, I do know that this one did not get a buy it from me. It probably got to try it, but... Um... 20, under 25 before or after tax. Let's go before tax because tax varies from state to state. All right, so this is this is kind of growing on me a little bit. We got caramel for sure. There's some sort of like a kind of a, a very candy sweetness to this, but there's something else going on, almost like a like an herbiness to it. Herbaceous. Jack, Evan, Wild Turkey 101, Elijah Craig, yep. I did try my hardest to stay under 20, but then I went and looked, and, and two of the bottles I already had were actually over uh, 20, but under 25. So I kept this under 25. But every bottle I've done so far has been under 20. All right, so there's like a honey note here. So let's... uh. Give the Evan Williams a, a nose. It's actually like I wonder if, I wonder if like nosing water would somehow cleanse the cleanse the nose. <sighs> Buffalo Trace, yeah. See the the problem is finding Buffalo Trace for under twenty five nowadays is actually pretty tough. Prior, like before, Whiskey Tube kind of blew up Buffalo Trace's spot. And uh, people started, you know, buying it because they think it's, you know, like Pappy. <laughs> um, I would have completely agreed with you. Buffalo Trace would have been a hard one to touch for an under-25 bracket. All right. Nose on there is pretty two-dimensional. There's a caramel and then, like, a mint going on. So that's a little unique. And that, that might be enough to, to bring it. But let's see how the taste goes. So cheers. Totally right. Smelling your elbow or just anywhere on your skin, it's it's good to reset your nose, nose palate, whatever you want to call it. The taste here is fantastic. Um, I probably shouldn't have just talked through that, but the taste of Wild Turkey 81, it's it's a wild turkey, right? Like, it, it tastes like wild turkey, and it tastes very good. Very sweet. Um, no alcohol burn, really, at all. This is a 75% corn mash bill, so that explains the sweetness. Then you've got 13% rye, which adds a little bit of the heat, and then 12% barley. Now, the barley obviously would add kind of like this maltiness to it, maybe give it a little bit more body, but overall you're tasting the corn, and you're tasting tasting some, um, uh, what do you call it, like honey flavors, caramel sweetness. Hmm. Wild Turkey 81. Now, the one negative I'll give this is that the, the the alcohol is not super refined here, and that could be a problem for it. It's no age statement, so I have no idea exactly how long it's been in the barrel, um, but I can tell you it's not long enough to really mellow out the tail end of the alcohol burn. So, let's see how that holds up to the Evan Williams. Hmm. It's funny, I don't know if I ever, got, ever told you guys this. So my wife got me these for my birthday, I think last year. And she got me, like, 50 of them. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, if people come over, you could just, like, give them, like, if they want water because they're drinking your whiskey, you could just give them the glass, uh, cup, and then they have a souvenir to take home. So it's funny because I, I have a stack. I probably have about 35 of them left. <laughs> but 
I uh, I do like drinking out of it. It's kind of a fun fun thing. All right, cheers. All right, taste on this one. There's a good reason that I typically mix Evan Williams. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know why I thought that was wrong. There's a, a good reason I mix it. It's not bad, but it is tougher to have that alcohol burn at the end. It's it's like a harsh, whereas this one's more just like, oh, I'm alcoholic. This one's actually like a harsh kind of wish it was a little bit more mellow. There's also not a whole lot on the, the terms of dimension to the flavor. You're getting oak. Uh, you can definitely taste the tannins. It immediately dries out your the inside of your mouth. So that's cool, and I do like that. Um, also getting a little hint of, uh, let's say, some sort of herb as well. But I, I would actually, I would say it's more of like a thyme flavor, or possibly, not sure why I'm equating the two, but like a minty or a thyme. It's not like sage, which I've gotten somewhat recently. It's not like... I don't know, rosemary, it's it's something drier. So um, caramel, I would expect it to show up harder, but it's really not. Um, I think, you know what I think it is? I think that timey flavor was more the, the alcohol part. Um, anyway, so verdict here goes to wild turkey. Uh, this is, in my opinion, superior. And uh, let me double check those prices one more time because I'm curious. So sixteen ninety nine versus eleven forty nine. Okay, I mean that's a pretty pretty big difference. That's like a, you know what, like a thirty three percent or fifty percent price increase, but it pulls it off. All right, so Wild Turkey eighty one is going to the winner's circle, and you are down to the floor. All right, I'm gonna put these over here, and let's go ahead and update our frosto. So we are going Wild Turkey. That's funny. I uh, I don't want to mess with my camera because it's it's angled properly, but I've got all these little cutouts because I don't know what's gonna win, right? So I have three or four cutouts of each one. I don't really want to move them. Um, like I could take it off here and put it over here, but I don't really want to do that. Just I think it looks better this way. All right, so we're gonna have the battle of the birds uh, coming up in the in the uh, quarterfinals, I guess. All right, so next <laughs> we are going on to, and I'm laughing and I'll explain why in a minute. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just checking out on the chat. Buffalo Trace literally sits on the shelves in my area. That's so funny. Um, all right, so we've got Jim Beam White Label. And we got Jesse James America Outlaw Bourbon. What the hell is this? <laughs> right? That's what I thought when I first saw it. I was surprised it wasn't one of these Spirit Directs things. So Jesse James... Uh, other than being like a historical icon of uh, the United States, which I'll go into a little bit because I actually will probably really do a review of this. But there is a guy, and actually this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little thing. I'm going to plug uh, Swami's channel. Um, so Malton in Montreal, they used to have a, a YouTube channel. He now has a, um, another channel called Two Wheels Down where he talks about motorcycles and stuff. And that's related to this because Jesse James is a guy who makes motorcycles. He's very famous for that. Um, so... Uh, if any of the mods feel like linking Swami's channel, feel free to go ahead and do that in the chat. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and pour this Jesse James. Boop, boop, boop. Ooh, apparently I've never opened this. I've had it for a while. Just felt like I should have a bottle of uh, the White Label Jim Beam on hand. And I have yet, you know, it's funny. I've never done a review of Jim Beam or of uh, Evan Williams on the channel. I really got to get to that because those are, you know, searched for. Um, <laughs> still banking on four roses. Yeah, so actually, if you guys want to want to hedge your bets, and or not hedge your bets, if you want to, oh, that's so funny. This is actually a Jim Beam Glen Karen. I didn't even notice. I should have switched. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Jesse James here. Now, Jesse James, it keeps doing that. It's so weird. It's I think it's like retrieving the um, the image from my, my external hard drive, and I think that's what's going on. Anyway, so Jesse James, 2.72 out of 76 votes. It's $12.99. So this one probably should have gone up against Evan Williams, but we'll we'll uh, do we'll do it how the way I came up with. There was there was some logic to how I put things against each other, but not a ton of thought. All right, so regular Jim Beam, I mean, everybody knows regular Jim Beam. Uh, you've probably had it at a party. 
maybe mixed with something. And uh, this is a 2.5, solidly in the middle at 2600, like exactly in the middle. Really, really funny. Um, I went to two, two digits of the precision, so it's crazy to think that that ended up that way. All right, we are going to try the Jesse James first. Sorry, let me uh, scroll. I have a lot going on here. It's actually, it's kind of funny. I've got just everything spread out all over the all over my uh, desktop. I have a, a ultra wide monitor. It's about this big and it's filled with stuff about the stream. <sighs> now the, the smell on this, I will say, is better than you would expect in that it's kind of nothing. <laughs> so if you, if you knows this, it's going to smell a little bit like caramel and then kind of maybe just like water. Um, Everything about this is just kind of watered down. Maybe a little bit of caramel on there. Th this is just very simple, right? All right, let's go over to actually what is probably also pretty simple. I drink some water. I sniff the arm. Sniff the whiskey. Okay, this one's a little bit, little bit more refined, a little bit more substance to it. So it's caramel, it's vanilla, and that's about it. No alcohol burn at all, doesn't smell young, it smells done on purpose. This one smells, actually that one smells done on purpose too. Um, all right, let's go ahead and have a taste of each one. I'm actually going to switch things up, I'm going to start with the Jim Beam here. So... I used to actually rock three monitors, uh, but now I just have like the one huge ultra wide. I could totally see myself getting a second ultra wide though. It'd be kind of cool to just be engulfed in like a dome of mirror of uh, monitors. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So this one's seventy-seven percent corn, um, thirteen percent rye, ten percent malted barley. It is not as sweet as it should be at that mash bill. But what it is, is very mellow. You don't taste the alcohol whatsoever. And it is only 80 proof. Actually, both of these are 80 proof. So I felt like that made sense. But it's, it's pretty, pretty good. I could see sipping this, although I feel like me personally, if I were to be drinking this straight, I would probably add an ice cube to it. Something about this feels like it deserves an ice cube. It, it feels like it, it wants to be more refreshing than an experience, if that makes any sense. Almost like a, well, it's funny. I, let, me, let me talk about this one first. I have a feeling I'm going to make the same reference to both of these. It's based off the way that this smells. So, Bill's Whiskey Dome. Well, that's what this is. <laughs> oh, man, a Whiskey Dome. Just... Dome full of whiskeys. I like that. Be like an igloo. Like a like a whistle pigloo. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of all right. Let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm. That's interesting. It's actually different than it was a couple days ago, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I think maybe it's just me tonight. Maybe somehow it's a little different. So when I first tasted this, I actually sent, so I'm in like a, you know, a text chat with some friends. I sent them a picture of it just because I wanted to be like, ah, look at this stupid thing. Um, and they, I told them basically it tasted watered down and they started talking about how we should market it or, you know, come up with a whiskey that's really watered down and market it as like the Gatorade of whiskey, right? Like it's a, it's a thirst quencher, but it tastes like whiskey. And, uh, you know, kind of went off on this whole thing. And so then I ended up having them over last Friday, both of these, these two guys, and I had them both try it. Now, there isn't a ton gone, so I didn't pour a lot. But immediately, their response was, that tastes like whiskey-flavored water. <laughs> and they were totally right. It's, it's just not very good. Um, this is the first bomb out of this whole group so far that I would absolutely not recommend anybody try. Excuse me. So... I am going to kind of be fair. I'm going to take one more one more taste. Because you never know. <laughs> but I think I know. Hmm. 
Gold Gang UK, I'm assuming that you're in the United Kingdom, so thanks for joining in so late. Uh, I would ask why you're not sleeping. <laughs> I, uh, But then I would realize that I am often up about your time pretty much every night. So, um, yeah, I think that's just a hard no. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will say this is not exactly blowing my socks off, but it's also clearly superior to this. So this guy's going into the loser's pit. All right. Cool. So Jimmy Beam, you go over in the winner's circle. And let's grab our tape. Ah. Oh no, did I run out? Ah, shoot. Well, luckily for me, I package stuff constantly and I have more tape. Yeah, whatever I did. Cool. All right, give me a sec. Boom. Got more tape. Also, that tavern strength on the label is straight up marketing. Oh, my gosh. You, I'm so glad that you said something. I meant to read this. Okay. So, on the Jesse James. Now, I will eventually do a, a review of this. If for no other reason, this bottle is fantastic. Um, so... Not that side. Okay. <laughs> in loving memory of an American outlaw murdered by a traitor and coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. I freaking love that. But it also says... Where does it say this? Oh, this is one of my favorite parts. So this this little neck tag, right? That's I think that's what we call these guys. <laughs> what do you think would be on the inside of this? Right? It would probably... You know what? I'm going to do this. So on the inside of this, you would assume it's going to be about the whiskey, right? No. No, why would it be? It's about the Colt, Colt 45. Because <laughs> why not? And then it's just a little bit about Jesse James. And I, and I get it. He's, he has a connotation with, with the Colt 45. But you have a neck tag on it. Sell your whiskey. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. I don't know who this is made for. But I'm sure that they have their market. And I'm sure that they're happy. Oh, this is where it is. Always drink upstream from the herd. Life lesson there. Always drink upstream from the herd. <sighs> All right. You can call me Billy or William. What's on the agenda today? Oh, Gold Gang. You have the best name that there is. I see. I have not gone by Billy for a long time, though. My dad's name is Bill, so I was always Little Billy, which is hilarious because I'm about six foot three. Um, all right. So last... But not least, this is actually one I'm really excited to do. So we've got the Four Roses Regular Bourbon, yellow label, a lot of people call it. And then we've got the Evan Williams 1783. I've never tried this one. I'm pretty excited to try it. So let's see how this goes. I uh, just want to make sure I've got my notes here. All right. So first things first, let's talk. It's going to take a sec. While it's grabbing. All right. Let's see what's going on. All right, Four Roses Yellow Label Bourbon. <clears throat> I need two glasses. Cool. Pour, pour, pour. So this guy's $15.49. It's got a score of 3.13 out of 1,822. Now, this is one that goes against my rule, which is actually interesting. It means a lot of people think pretty highly of the yellow, uh, the, the yellow label. Now, we've also got the... Evan Williams, 1783, which is a 3.15, and this is $15.49. Now, this is why I put these two together. With quite a few votes, they were both actually pretty high up in the rating, and I thought that it would be good to put them head-to-head. -head. So let's go ahead and do that. How am I doing on time? Perfect. Half done, and I'm almost through with the initial eight, so I think I'm right on time. Uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum goes on right after me, and I, I like to try to, you know, I want to want to make sure I, I keep to my time. Um, I'll go long if necessary, but I'm also haven't I also have not had dinner yet, so you know have nine o'clock dinner. All right, let's go ahead. I want to start with the 1783. Now this is Heaven Hill. Um, for those of you that don't know, Evan Williams comes from Heaven Hill. So 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% barley. <sighs> Smells like a bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it is more floral and more fruity and more light 
no, light's not the right word. More floral and fruity, mostly fruity, than a typical bourbon. Instead of concentrating on caramel and vanilla, it's concentrating more on like a green apple kind of thing. So, hmm. Yeah, it actually smells pretty good. If I, if I poured this and I didn't know what it was and I smelled this, I'd say, first off, I'd say it's a bourbon. But I'd also say that this is a pretty, this is something I'm excited for. It doesn't smell bad. Bill, shut up. Drink it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go yellow, yellow roses first. Yellow roses. <sighs> I'm either talking too fast or drinking too fast. Probably both. Well, so, you know, that you make a good point, Kenneth, and typically I would agree with you. Delicate instead of light makes sense, but I maybe I'm going to recant what I said. I would not actually call this light, because after I nosed it, it was, it's actually a little, little heavier. It's got some substance to it. It's almost the nosing equivalent of having a good mouth feel. A good nose feel? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't have the, the same ring to it. This one's fallen a little bit flatter on the nose, I gotta say. Yeah. Um, are these both the same ABV? No, this one's a little higher. Okay, that makes sense. So this is 43% and this is 40. So, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Oh, hold on. Whiskey Dictionary. Years ago, when It's Bourbon Night did a bunch of blind videos, Sarah kept picking Evan Williams 1783 over more expensive bottles. I could probably see that. Um... But let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. Hmm. 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 That was... Oh, wow. Man, talk about an experience. So that was like... Like... Oh, this is pretty good. This is pretty... Wow, this is actually really, really good. Oh, man, something happened. It, oh, no, it's getting better again. Like, that's really strange. I would say... Um, man, I don't know. Give, give me a second to think about this one. I want to have a sip of water. I want to try it again. Hmm. Have any of you out there tried the, um, the 1783? Because I, I think that you might notice what I'm talking about if you have it on hand. I remember that video and expected a lot more from 1783. I was sort of disappointed because it tasted a little watered down. Yes, I would kind of agree with that. There is... I know exactly what you're talking about, I should say. But, what did I pay for this? 1783, I have my I have my receipt, my recept here. As, uh, 1783... What, where the hell are you? 1549. For 15 and a half dollars... Uh, I don't expect a whole lot. So, let's see. If there is a new 1783, I would imagine this is it, because I just bought this, like, I don't know, two weeks ago. That's a pretty tasty bourbon. Hmm. I might be getting to that point where I'm not getting a whole lot of different nuances. I mean, I've, this is my seventh whiskey of the night in a half hour, so cut me a break. But, I will say it's very sugary. Um, brown sugar more so than, than necessarily caramel. It's got something going on where it's, uh, it's 43%. Um, trying to, trying to think here. I'm just watching the, the chat roll by a little bit. It's allegedly six to eight years old. That's very interesting. The new one is 90 proof. Okay. So that's good to know. I will keep my eyes out for that actually. Although I'm up here in Massachusetts, I never get anything. Um, you know what this tastes like? Actually, hold on. Yeah. You know what this tastes like? It tastes like really cheap, really cheap vanilla extract. Um, think like, what is it, McCormick? I think McCormick makes those little guys. Like, have you ever had good vanilla extract? I'm sure you guys have. You guys all appreciate the finer things in life. I've had like this Mexican vanilla that some one of my friends gave me. It had a piece of straw wrapped around it. It was like super good. And after I had that, I started realizing how the regular McCormick, I'm just saying McCormick, it could be wrong. I think it says like pure vanilla on, maybe it's Wegmans, who knows. Um, anyway, I started noticing the difference. And it's just another one of those instances where you get what you pay for, right? I'm sure the other one was 
probably like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars for a thing of vanilla, whereas the other one's like what two and a half, three dollars. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the four roses because I know several of you have picked that as the favorite. Which one do you guys think is going to win, the seventeen eighty three or the or the yellow rose? I I did it again. The yellow label four roses. Oh boy, my wife is going to like me tonight, knowing I have like six more drams to drink. Forty three percent, forty percent. Hmm. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. This one is a lot easier to drink. That's not a good thing, in my mind. But, that doesn't make it bad either. <sighs> this is actually going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm going to have to have another sip of each one. <sighs> but, <laughs> but, they're good for different reasons. And the fact that these are up against each other means I have to pick one. But this is one I kind of wish had waited till the second round. Because they're both good. This one has a really fun finish on it to me that I think is something worth worth uh, celebrating. But let, let's see. I don't know. Let's see. What the yellow label doesn't have is anything that I'm picking out that is like like a standout flavor. But it is a different flavor profile than the 1783, too. So give me a sec. Mm. Mm. I'm really, currently I'm leaning towards this guy. It's just more pleasant when you first taste that first sip. I feel like there, there should be some sort of a study, and maybe I'm just the man to do it, of what the initial flavor of a whiskey has like an impact on, you know, how it, how it tastes overall. Like, the, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, this one is standout because immediately when it hits your tongue, you're like, that's good. This one takes a minute to get there. And that, maybe it's a, a what do you call it? Like, needing that immediate, what, what do people always accuse millennials of needing? Like, immediate satisfaction, so there's, a, there's a term for it. Instant gratification. This gives you instant gratification. This one makes you work for it. Now, see, this is tough. Oh, man. This is way harder to pick than I think. This is what's called a pregnant pause. <laughs> While I think. I really don't know. I have to choose one. I think I'm going to go with the Evans. You know, two, two times I've said I thought I was going to go with the, the Evans. Uh, Evan Williams, but that four roses, it kind of hurts to put this one on the floor. Anybody watching this in the future, if you decide to get a, a four roses yellow label, like you're going to do fine. I know that in my review quite a while back, I said that it wasn't worth your money. And compared to the small batch, 100% correct. But small batch is also twice the price of the yellow label. Either one of these you would do well. Like this, this one actually hurts to choose one. All right. Uh, seems like Four Roses should have an upscale 50% NCF bottle with all 10 whiskeys, not just the most base one they do. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but the price the price is what made me choose this particular one. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll switch over to camera two. And the winner here was Evan Williams, 1783. Oh, that's a mistake. <clears throat> all right, so, so far... We are going to have pretty good head-to-head. -head. Now, I can tell you right away, I'm pretty sure the Evan Williams is going to beat the Jim Beam, but we'll see what happens. Um, Fighting Cock and Wild Turkey, that's going to be a good a good matchup. Um, all right, so let's let's do it. I was debating about switching things up. Hey, Mash and Drum. What's going on, Jason? Nice to see you. How dumb would I look if I just cracked that? <laughs> all right. So we are going to go with the Battle of the Birds. We got the Fighting Cock and the Wild Turkey. Now, Wild Turkey 81 might have a hard time standing up to the ABV of the Fighting Cock. 
I don't know about the rest of you guys, but occasionally, actually not even occasionally, pretty much every day, I get, you know, stupid recommendations on YouTube. And somehow I've gotten myself into this um, algorithmic choice where Beavis and Butthead clips show up constantly <laughs> for me. So I'm just like always seeing Beavis and Butthead and it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot help myself but click on them. All right, I'm going to do my best to clear my palette. Hmm. To anybody who's joining us just now, uh, first off, where the hell were you? But also, we are now in our second round. I'm about to do the uh, fighting cock versus the wild turkey. So, let's do that. Let's start with the fighting cock. <sighs> I'm going to concentrate less on the nosing here, other than just giving them a nose and making sure that everything's kind of still lining up. But... <sighs> so, actually, some, something else I wanted to mention. So, for anybody who's just joining, everything here is as close to $20 as possible. The only reason I put under $25 is because a couple of them are like $21. Um, but the Jim Beam and the Evan Williams I already had. Uh, the Evan Williams is very cheap, but I think, I think I don't even know which one. One of these was like $21, but it was very hard to find actually even eight of these that were under $25 that were not total wine specific grams. All right, getting into this. Whew. Right now on the nose, the wild turkey is kind of blowing the, the fighting cock away. Thank you, Jim. Ooh, this is interesting. Hmm. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right. I don't know, man. This is a tough one, just based off the nose alone. Um, all right, let's go ahead and have a have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Look at me taking it seriously. <laughs> All right, Wild Turkey, uh, Wild Turkey 81 is pretty good on the flavor, but let's see, let's see what this does. Hmm. Now at this point, I need to make a decision. Not just which one to choose, but exactly how am I rating these, right? In the first round, it really was just, which one's better? At this point, they're both good. And so I need to decide, does the fighting cock handle the ABV well enough that it's enjoyable? And does the wild turkey come in strong enough at 81 proof? The flavor profile of both of them is different, but subjectively, I could see either anybody picking either one. The Wild Turkey 101 holds the spirit of what it is better. It is a wild turkey through and through, for sure. Any wild turkey that you taste is going to taste similar to this, probably better, but similar. Fighting Cock is, let's check the price real quick, because that might come into play. 1849 versus 1699. Okay, so those are pretty close. Fighting Cock, believe it or not, is one of the oldest bourbons in the country. <laughs> Can you believe that? It's been around for a wicked long time. Um, man, I don't know. I'm also trying real hard not to be biased and just pick Fighting Cock because it's funny. But, you know, that's that's kind of... It's kind of part of it, you know? A wild Turkey has its place. But... Going into the finals, I think the Fighting Cock is a better choice. If this was Wild Turkey 101, it would win. For sure. The 81 can't hold up to the ABV of the Fighting Cock. And the, the fullness of flavor that I think the higher proof version of this gives it. So, Wild Turkey, you put up a good fight, but you are going to the floor. 
All righty. That was a tough one. Let's go to the board. Fighting cock. Going to the finals, my friend. All right, next is Jim Beam versus the Evan Williams 1783. Now, this is going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure the 1783 is going to knock it out of the park, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. <clears throat> That's a great noise, isn't it? Glug, 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 glug. All right. So let's remind ourselves a little bit of the price points on these two, because that does factor in a little bit. A little bit. Evan Williams is $15.49. Jim Beam is $15.49. Fantastic. So that has absolutely zero bearing. This one is 100% which one tastes better. It's sad, but the Evan Williams bottled and bond is usually my go-to, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, Connor. I love that. I'm going to approve that. Lost to the cock. All right. Cool. So, cast your votes. Which one do you think is going to win? I'm going to start with the uh, Jim Beam. 1792. Oh, 1783. Never mind. 1792. Are you talking about... Okay, yes. Um... I have that back here somewhere. The small batch was super close. I think it was like $25.99 where I am. Is Fighting Cock produced by Heaven Hill? So I actually, I wrote to Fighting Cock today because I'm, I'm thinking I might actually do them for this week's video, which I'll be filming tomorrow night. Um, I, I don't know a whole lot about this one yet, other than I've drank half the bottle. And I, I'm probably going to know a whole lot more by tomorrow. So we'll see. All right, so people are voting. We got Beam all the way, um, 1783. The smell on this one is very good. Spectrum sucks. You're pretty new to bourbon. What? Well, so what do you spend? I, I know you're in the chat all the time. Do you spend most of your time in scotch? I think you might. All right, so the nose on the 1783... I would say if it was nose alone, the Jim Beam is better. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hmm. This has a very full flavor that is mostly like... Here, how do I want to express this? When I have the 1783, my initial thought is this tastes pretty good, but the finish on it is where it, it fails a little bit. It tastes very dry. It's almost like, it's almost like sniff, uh, smelling oregano, um, in the er herbaceousness, herbalicious, um, in the herbaceousness of this, it's, it's not great. It's, it's only got a couple of, couple of tones, um. It doesn't smell at all or taste at all like a bourbon. That's not true. I would peg this as a bourbon, but it doesn't have a lot of the classic bourbon notes. Interesting. I don't know. All right. That's funny, Gabriel. Um, I've specifically never tried the Jim Beam's Devil Cut, only because a long time ago, uh, Malton Montreal just gave it an absolute beating. And it's one of the few times that I've actually watched another whiskey tuber and taken their word for it <laughs> instead of just trying to prove it to myself. So I could be wrong, but I have purposely never, never had that one. Oh, so uh, it's Heaven Hill. Okay, that's interesting. That's good. Mm. You're talking about the Evan Williams. Sorry, never mind. I thought you were answering the question about the fighting cock. Does anybody out there know who, who makes fighting cock? Because right now, I think it says it's, um, oh, age 36 months. Now, it doesn't say that it's bottled anywhere in particular. It might actually be their own. Distilled, aged, and bottled by Fighting Cock Distilling Co Company. Bardstown, Kentucky. Okay, so it's actually potentially its own thing. That's interesting. <laughs> Kenneth. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I thought that you were being serious. 
you know, you say Google does, and that's probably true. Just having done this channel for six and a half years at this point, potentially even more, um, Google doesn't know everything. And there have been more than a few times I've had to call distilleries and ask them specific questions and, uh, you know, see what they say. So, okay, so Fighting Cock is Heaven Hill. That, that makes a lot of sense because I like it, you know. I like Heaven Hill in general. I am. I'm in Massachusetts, Eric. All right. Hmm. Wow, I'm running low on time. I didn't realize. I've slowed down a bit. All right, let me make a decision fairly quick on this one so we can get the last round in. All right. One more sip. Okay. tough. I think what's going to do this is the 1783, I don't love the finish. And with the Jim Beam, it's even the whole way. And it's kind of just not, it's less interesting though. Hmm. I take it back. I'm not going to hurry so much. Sorry, Jason. I might be like two minutes into your stream. All right. If I had to pick one of these to have, I'm picking the Jim Beam. <clears throat> All right, I did not think that was the way it was gonna go. The 1783 is really, really good uh, for what it is, but it's also not, it's just not enough. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna do Jim Beam versus Fighting Cock. We're gonna update our, uh, our thing here. I did not think for a second that Jim Beam was making it this far into the bracket. I thought it was going to lose in the, uh, well, not against Jesse James, but I also changed things up a little earlier. I think Jesse James was originally going to be against something different. <clears throat> you need a recount. <laughs> I know, that was a tough choice, and I might have chose wrong, but I got to stick with what I chose in the moment, right? <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go with a Whiskey Dick Glen Glen Karen and a Damn Fine Dram uh, Dram Glen Karen. So we are going fighting cock. Oh boy. <laughs> Might have had too much. Let's see. Drinking this much whiskey in an hour? It's problematic. But luckily, before it gets bad, I will be turning off the stream. <clears throat> we'll see. All right. I think this one is going to come down to what the finish tastes like. <clears throat> but we'll see. All right, a little bit of water. <clears throat> I think I, you know, let's uh, let's go fourth wall breaking. I don't think the Jim Beam has a chance here, man. Against, like, this is 80 proof versus 103, and I am nothing if not a proof whore. So let's start with Jim Beam, and uh, let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Interesting. We'll, we'll save the comments for a minute. Sorry, I was reading uh, One Man's Odyssey. Yeah, man, I'm totally with you. I actually really like videos like this where you you buy everything yourself. Nothing's purchased for you, so there's no no hint at any sort of bias, right? Um, oh, God, yeah. No, I wouldn't drink and drive with this like this. Um, but I love when there's no bias and there's no agenda, and I don't really freaking care who wins. Um, the only thing I might have is, you know, maybe a little bit of embarrassment if I happen to pick something like that Jesse James to be the winner. But frankly, if it got all the way to the end, it's probably pretty good. My, my palate doesn't suck. Um, anyway, all right, so let's go fighting cock. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I dare say that I think that fighting cock is going to take this whole thing. And, ah, man... I'm almost tempted to do like a blind tasting of all of these and see what I come up with. Mmm. That's good. So here's what I'm going to do. For this last round, I am going to proof down the fighting cock. I put quite a bit in there. <clears throat> My intent being 
I want to water it down to about equal width with this. Alright, Fighting Cock had a six year age statement, would like to have one of those old bottles. Yeah, there there is also a, uh, I think maybe a, actually yeah, it's a six year. I think they've only ever made two. I didn't realize it wasn't being made anymore. Hmm. Dare I say, at lower proof, the Fighting Cock is actually a little better. You're getting... I, I've clearly drank several of these. Like, what is this? 12 different whiskeys now? Or different drinks? Um, I'm getting notes still out of this. That's interesting. There's banana. There's oak. There's caramel. It's, it's pretty tasty. Oh, man, this is interesting. But the Jim Beam is holding strong. Nah, I'm giving it to the Fighting Cock. Fighting Cock is the winner tonight. I can't even believe this shit. That, if you asked me, I would have said the, the least likely was probably the Jesse James. After that was probably Fighting Cock. All right, so I managed to fit that just about in an hour. I am going to mix all of these together because that's a thing that us whiskey tubers enjoy doing. This is going to take me a moment. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh my gosh, there's so many of these. I ended up using 14 glasses. Fighting cock. Go out and buy one, honestly. For real. Like, it's, it's not a lot. And tell me what you think. Come back, comment on this video. Tell me if you bought it. If you did, good for you. I think you're going to laugh having it in your collection. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so full. There's going to be, what, four fighting cocks in here? Three? Three. This one's too full to fill it, but I'll get a little splash. Right up to the tipping top. <laughs> Yo, that's a cool looking color, man. Look at that. <laughs> All right, cheers, everybody. Mm. Mm. Holy crap, that's good. That's really good. Wow. I can't tell you what's in that, but it's it's certainly not the Jesse James. <laughs> wow, that's really good. I'm actually going to take this one upstairs with me and have it with dinner. So, thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. This has been a lot of whiskey in a very short amount of time. Go over to the Mash and Drums channel and go hang out with him. And uh, keep watching the videos, you know. Support the channel. If, you, if you've got it in you, join the Patreon. Lots of good stuff there. And uh, other than that, just keep watching the channel. Your support means a lot to me. So, have a great rest of your night. Go out and buy some fighting cock. And... Uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's it. What what else is there more to say? Fighting Cock should not have won, but it totally did. King, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Cheers. Uh, click. <laughs>